We have seen how to design uh, VLSI systems uh, using Verilog and uh, we have considered uh, both uh, implementations on FPGA board as well as without it. And uh, here is suggested a uh, number of uh, applications for you to design on FPGA or uh, ASIC. And uh, so here is uh, some of, I mean around uh, 60 or above uh, applications are there and some of which have already been um, uh, done by other uh, people and uh, both in industries as well as uh, uh, R&D institutions and uh, some of which we will uh, touch in brief to start with and then go to uh, taking uh, two design uh, applications and consider uh, little more elaborately the specification, the block diagram, etc. for you to make a start on your own application. And uh, first one in the list here is uh, what is called Alam Annunciata and uh, as the name implies we need to uh, uh, monitor different uh, para engineering parameters in industries especially. It may be a power plant, it may be a, a cement plant, sugar plant and so on, a steel, uh, anything that you can conceive of. In fact, um, even thermal, uh, I mean nuclear plant, whatever you want. So for all these, you would have seen uh, probably on TV or in uh, magazines or journals, uh, huge control panels over which sit some uh, flashing lamps and uh, that is precisely what is called alarm annunciator and there are very many sequences in that and uh, over 80 sequences at least I have known and uh, uh, this, uh, if you are really interested, you can uh, contact me for more uh, specification on this, but I am not going to furnish any specification uh, right in this lecture. And uh, you can also go for automobiles and uh, do some um, uh, controller, intelligent controller uh, meant for say anti-lock uh, brakes, say uh, um, it is also uh, called I think as ABS brake. It is uh, uh, basically, uh, especially in uh, uh, foreign countries, this is in vogue and um, this basically when you apply brake uh, continuously uh, and if the road is slippery, uh, naturally it will be a disastrous consequence if you jam on your brakes. So you will have to do what is called a pumping action you have to give on the brake, but uh, you cannot uh, really control uh, intelligently on the spur of the moment. So you need some um, uh, controller which will do uh, mo uh, monitor the actual road condition accordingly, intelligently apply the brakes intermittently. For that you need a controller, you can uh, design such a controller and that is uh, second one and uh, naturally for uh, you can have camera and uh, uh, which will um, focus all by itself, you sh uh, just shoot 
any scene, it will automatically uh, adjust its focal length. All this call for uh, lots of intelligence being embedded in the uh, chip that you are going to design. And uh, what is shown here um, for different applications uh, can, uh, I mean, uh, are already in vogue as embedded systems wherein uh, normally um, 8051 controller, microprocessor controller or, um, or even any other processor such as 8085 or 68000 or you can use uh, what is called PIC, peripheral inter um, uh, interface connect and uh, such uh, devices basically they are controllers. You can uh, design even that using either an uh, FPGA or ASIC and uh, there are other um, uh, applications say, such as automatic teller machines which you are already f familiar and uh, if you go to um, uh, 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 toll gate, so you may have to uh, uh, pay some octroi or other charges there. So such uh, things can be uh, uh, designed by you, automatic toll systems is what is mentioned here. And once again coming back to the um, automobile, you have automatic transmission. See, uh, you have to, you do not, I mean, this is only to dispense away with the application of the gear which we do I mean, manually. So, uh, once you start your engine uh, and then um, engage the um, uh, gear system uh, and uh, you forget about the gear thereafter and uh, until you come to your destination and stop the engine. Till then, you have to have once again an uh, embedded system controller which will do this, uh, which will, uh, this will dynamically change because uh, you may have to climb up the hill or go down the hill. Uh, there may be lots of ups and downs, pitfalls every, uh, on the end route and uh, road may be slippery and uh, it may be raining or snowing or whatever. So, all these um, uh, conditions dynamically change. So, accordingly you will have to um, uh, see what the conditions are and then apply that which will uh, make a safe transition from one gear to another. Uh, you cannot dispense really with the gear change, it is there, but only thing is it is automatic. What all you have to do is just start your engine and then uh, just engage gear at say D1 or D2 or D3 depending upon the place you are in. Normally a D1 is enough, even I have seen personally that even uh, big flyovers it uh, climbs without, I mean with ease. And uh, uh, next is uh, after automatic transmission, what you see is avi avionics systems. So, airborne systems, there are uh, many uh, parameters to be measured. So, all this you can implement, say latitude, at, uh, I mean altitude, and so on, and uh, wind speed, uh, all uh, some of the examples. Then uh, you have gone to airport, so you have seen lots of uh, baggages going uh, to and fro from one place to another, and uh, uh, source of, I mean, uh, baggage may be uh, many, and uh, likewise the destination may be many. And uh, so, you need to control all this uh, 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 conveyor belts basically or it can be security system within, uh, I mean uh, without opening the baggage, you have some uh, x-ray taken on that uh, your baggage and uh, contents reported, all this you can uh, automate. And uh, you, you know camcorders which you use uh, as a video camera and uh, it is basically uh, analog uh, domain and uh, you have a, a tape to record. And, uh, but this would demand again an ASIC design and uh, cell phone is a too well known thing. For uh, communication you normally use an analog and uh, digital is the processing and uh, you can uh, design uh, at least the digital part of this uh, cell phone. And once you have cell phone you need to have base stations from which uh, it will be relayed to a next one and so on. And that is how uh, you get a cell phone message and uh, you want to have a cordless phone, then you can have uh, once again uh, you may uh, require some uh, IC for that. And uh, once again coming to uh, automobile, you can have a cruise control and uh, you can have, um, you can just uh, speed up to the limit that you want to go. Yes, this is especially useful if you are going on uh, uh, freeways and uh, that is highways in eastern countries you call. And uh, once you lock on to a particular, you just accelerate to the desired speed, let us say 50 miles per hour and then uh, press a button which is the, uh, which will take over uh, and uh, maintain that speed. And uh, you can um, uh, release your foot um, from the accelerator and uh, concentrate on just applying on the brake when the occasion demands. Otherwise, 
the um, uh, cruise control will take care to uh, keep your um, uh, vehicle uh, steady at 50 miles per hour. And uh, next is curbside check-in systems. Say uh, you, uh, this is generally for parking. You want to park your car, and naturally you had to pay for it. And there will be automatic machines which will uh, take in this and give a, a issue a, a receipt for that. And uh, so you can think of such application. And another is digital camera, which is very well known, and uh, disk drives. Then uh, you have electronic card readers. It can be for identify. Um, it's an, uh, basically an identity card, and uh, you have innumerable electronic instruments. For example, voltage, uh, current, etc., like a DMM that you use. You can have, um, and once again, all this would call for different uh, uh, chips to be designed, be it FPGA or ASIC. And uh, you have electronic toys, games. Uh, there also lots of scope is there for you to develop uh, such controllers. And uh, next one is electrostatic respirator controller. This we will take as uh, one of the two um, uh, for uh, considering the uh, detailed uh, specification. And uh, this is uh, used in um, uh, for ash disposal in uh, thermal uh, power plant. And next is encryption decryption. You can think of hardware. This is uh, mostly in uh, vogue as software, and uh, you can uh, now the demand has uh, come for the uh, hardware encryption as well as decryption, and um, uh, you can apply it to any uh, I mean uh, part of the ATM machine or uh, any uh, such uh, uh, place where you want security. You want to send your data, your program code, etc. So all this call for encryption and decryption, and um, you can do so and uh, quite many researchers are already on the job and uh, some few quite a few VHDL uh, um, uh, implementations have also come and then you have a fax machine or you want to identify fingerprints so you can have another system for that then if you want to have fire alarm system especially multi story building a huge um, complexes you do require such systems where you want to detect the smoke or fire so far, uh, this, this are all basically if it is smoke, etc. Normally, uh, americium uh, uh, nuclear material is being used, and uh, uh, basically it is to detect this smoke. And um, you can also detect fire by using a thermistor, and so on. And uh, uh, there will be a central control where you report uh, zone after zone, and if it is a huge complex, and within this zone there can be many such uh, detectors. And uh, every detector is identified, and its location announced. If there is a fire, in the event of fire or uh, smoke, you can uh, have an annunciation there. And for automobiles, you can think of global position system uh, to pinpoint where the automobile is, or uh, so that uh, the, um, it directs the driver. Uh, I mean, uh, a road map can be created on that. So pl there is plenty of scope for uh, work here in global position system. And uh, currently, lots of research is going on this. And then, home security system you want uh, theft control uh, uh, protection, or uh, you want to have install uh, gas leak, or uh, you are um, uh, right in the kitchen uh, in United States. I have seen quite many uh, such places uh, linked, and uh, lots of uh, sensors are uh, put there uh, to detect uh, high uh, temperature increase, or uh, smoke, um, uh, or gas leak, and so on. And uh, this will be normally connected through wireless to the nearest police station and uh, or fire uh, station. So we can think of uh, designing such systems. And another application is for uh, injection molding machine control. And um, normally you use uh, for ABS plastic um, uh, made components such as uh, pl uh, plastic casing for your cell phone or any other equipment that you think of or uh, phone for anything for that matter. So you can um, use for timing control, and uh, uh, that's what is called injection molding machine control. And then uh, we have already seen a camera example. Uh, JPEG uh, Kodak is also one such. If you want still picture, you can you need uh, JPEG. And if it is a DCT base, which we have already seen, you need JPEG. And uh, if it is DWT based, that's a discrete wavelet transform base, you need uh, JPEG 2000. If you want motion picture to be processed. In uh, JPEG 2K like thing, you have a motion JPEG 2K for the same, and you can. Uh, that's plenty of scope for you to develop uh, algorithms, architecture, and finally implementation as uh, FPGA or ASIC. 
then uh, life support systems the basically a medical uh, one of the medical equipments which is set down once again and uh, there are various uh, ECG then and so on. I am not a medical person so I cannot uh, derail much about it and you have a lift controller it is a very good uh, candidate um, FPG uh, can I mean or uh, ASIC implementation can be very easily done for a lift controller. You can use for modems and uh, MPEG codec also you can use some of which we have already touched earlier and uh, MPEG 1, MPEG 2 or MPEG 4, MPEG 7 all this uh, can be implemented. And of course, network cards many people have uh, already done and so is the case for network switches, routers etcetera. You can also attempt some of this and then uh, if you want onboard navigation whether it is uh, air or um, uh, ship. So, you can use uh, navigation for purposes uh, whatever engineering parameters uh, that is to be monitored controlled and uh, you can use um, uh, um, FPG once again and uh, so also ASIC. So, you know pagers uh, I do not have to explain all that and so is the case for photocopiers and for what is meant by point of sale systems is you can uh, you would have gone to uh, shopping malls super uh, markets and uh, you have a point of sale system there. So, all your bills are being routed there and all your uh, items that you purchase will be uh, separately uh, labeled and uh, with a barcode. So, they uh, what you have to do is just expose I mean uh, uh, this uh, barcode and uh, this uh, point of sale system will uh, um, accumulate all that and convert it into a bill and then uh, once you make your payment either through your uh, credit card uh, ATM card. So, uh, finally, a transaction takes place and um, so for that you need a, uh, a point of sale systems and uh, portable video games. So, all that what you want uh, I mean uh, battery operated portable video games you can uh, think of and later on I think uh, normal video games uh, using the uh, bigger displays will also be shown later on and uh, printer is too well known thing and many people have done. This uh, peripheral inter, uh, uh, interconnect uh, is uh, what I have mentioned already. This is basically a logic controller. So, what is coming next is a programmable logic controller or a programmable controller. This is a higher end of uh, PLC and a programmable controller can um, uh, use uh, I mean not only solve logic, but also even uh, acquire data uh, in a limited way. And uh, this is too well known for many of the appli industrial applications. And uh, PAC is one such a very limited thing confined to say 32 IOs etcetera with a one timer etcetera and uh, normally that goes as an uh, embedded system controller. And uh, if you want to uh, have a quality control system you can build a system which will do this. For example, you have a, an assembly of uh, painted cars coming and you can have a camera and um, then capture the um, video frame and uh, then compare it with a uh, good uh, known uh, 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 finish. So, with this uh, whether it is pass or fail you can uh, record all this can be uh, done if you have a good control system and for that uh, that is what we mean by quality control system. You can apply the same thing for any other uh, uh, industrial product and uh, robo control is very well known. So, it is uh, basically uh, uh, using uh, different motors especially um, uh, um, uh, what is that called uh, uh, what is the motor called here. So, okay, I will uh, recollect later on and uh, tell you what type it is and then uh, you, you can have satellite phones and, uh, uh, and then scanners then smart ovens you can have uh, everywhere you need some lots of controls to be done timing to be done. Uh, so, is the case with the uh, dishwashers and uh, for all this you need uh, uh, control uh, there and uh, the robo controller I forgot is the stepper motor normally used there and uh, you can have a smart scale for example, taking a weight or uh, when you purchase you can have a weight and this can be linked with the point of sales uh, terminal which we have already seen and uh, you can have uh, speech recognizers and then uh, stereo systems uh, of course, it appears so uh, simple an application but uh, these things are uh, becoming more and more complicated these days. So, you it calls for lots of uh, I mean it uh, demands the uh, need of uh, an, a particular IC to be uh, used 
and uh, teleconferencing system you can use and uh, for this you can have JPEG or uh, motion JPEG or, uh, or uh, MPEG uh, one codec etcetera you can use for uh, teleconferencing. Then you can conceive of uh, a temperature scanner or a controller for industrial purposes. There can be multi channel say 8 channel or 16 channel or even more, even hundreds of channels are there. Uh, you can uh, design a controller uh, which will take in uh, JK um, thermocouples or thermistor thermocouple or uh, even simple uh, temperature sensors like uh, AD 590 and the like. And uh, you can have another system say theft tracking system and uh, this especially uh, is uh, normally installed even in uh, automobiles, cars etcetera. So, for that you can design such system and then you can have TV set top boxes especially when you are uh, some uh, many cable people are uh, offering this uh, uh, I mean limited number of channels. You need to pay only what you want to see the number of TV channels and for that you need this and uh, of course, you can have an uh, universal PROM programmer and you can design a PROM programmer for that for not only PROM, but also PALS and uh, as a microcontrollers all this can be uh, programmed and uh, multiple of them and a uh, lot many features can be introduced in this and uh, you can have if you want you can make a digital IC tester and uh, various sizes you can have uh, what is already covered or what is uh, uh, not covered you can always add. And another application which uh, normally is not touched by many people is the unmanned railway line crossing. You see so many actions taking place because uh, railway lines are uh, unmanned. So, I would rather suggest that one of you seriously take, I even have uh, detailed specification, but I am not going to cover. Um, uh, you can try on this and once again it is basically a PGA uh, to start with and then you can migrate to a sick later on when it is uh, frozen. And uh, even VCRs, DVD players uh, come with lots of ICs and uh, you can uh, think of that as well and although there are so many players around on that. And uh, video game consoles which we have already seen earlier and uh, this is an extension of a higher end version which you would have seen in uh, many video parlors and uh, of course, video phones you can use. We have already seen that JPEG or uh, MPEG we have already covered along with the video conferencing we can use uh, do uh, video phones as well. So, you can uh, think of this and uh, we will be clubbing JPEG as well as uh, MPEG as well as this uh, video phone video conferencing and uh, be covering little more uh, in depth uh, in terms of uh, block diagram as well as the uh, uh, basic specification. So, along with the electrostatic respirator which we said earlier and uh, we can design washers and dryers and the last one I have listed here may be around 61 or 62 I will leave it to you to count is expandable Bethy thermograph which I have myself uh, handled uh, quite a decades back and uh, I heard that it is still in vogue. And this is to sense temperature of the ocean without stopping the ship as such. And uh, it uh, normally it is uh, for, um, uh, it uses a thermistor around 4.7 K at the tip of a spool uh, which will um, there will be a spool with a twin, a twin bonded wire. And when it, um, it can be launched from the ship uh, rear end and when it uh, when the probe touches the water the uh, uh, recording commences. So, you can have a strip chart recorder for continuous analog recording or um, uh, and or uh, rather and uh, digital uh, output periodically uh, sampled. And uh, the depth it can cover is some uh, 0 to 1500 feet and as you go deeper and deeper the temperature becomes colder and colder. And, uh, um, you can by using this you can find out uh, what is uh, embedded in the uh, ocean bed so whether mineral or uh, oil you can uh, have um, uh, and uh, school of fish also can be caught by using this and uh, you can conceive of such uh, application and uh, the list goes on and on in short it is limited only by your imagination and uh, we will go for uh, two of the applications uh, and before that let us see just uh, recollect what we have to take care, uh, what are the issues involved in digital VLC system design which you are already familiar, I will again remind you uh, what is to be done. An efficient application involves designing with minimum of internal external hardware in addition to optimized codes. You have to not only optimize your Verilog code, but also reduce the um, minimum I mean uh, hardware both internal, internal in sense what is inside the FPGA that you have 
coded or um, uh, FPGA means I mean it also means ASIC. So, the design chip area is what I mean by internal here, external in sense you need to uh, connect um, interface signals. So, uh, no system will work without the interface. In fact, uh, if you look at the cost considerations it is uh, the external hardware which uh, uh, takes more of the cost rather than the uh, internal hardware and uh, this is uh, true for most of the applications. So, you had to take care of both internal as well as external hardware while designing and naturally it calls for a minimum of a hardware uh, because that is going to determine the uh, your system cost and um, this is in addition to the optimization of your codes which we have already seen um, quite many times. And uh, HDL code, so uh, if it is Verilog or VHDL must conform to RTL coding guidelines this we have been repeatedly saying without which no chip will normally work and uh, even if it works it will give um, it will start malfunctioning it will give all sorts of problems later on. And uh, next point is uh, system development can be dramatically expedited if uh, based on bought out populated electronic cards. In fact, we have used a digital I O card as well as the FPGA card uh, which is a populated card and um, uh, populated and tested. So, that uh, you do not you are relieved of the burden of developing this hardware and uh, that is the positive end of uh, positive end. The negative uh, side is that uh, it may not suit your application. So, you may have to do uh, make some amendments as we have done here and uh, by um, uh, cutting and um, uh, connecting elsewhere in the form of expansion I O ports and so on and you may need to add more push button switches and in some cases you may have to add interfaces such as opto isolators, relays etcetera. And, uh, we uh, will have to take care of all this before you do. First uh, you have to uh, uh, make a overall assessment before you take up the system development and that is what we mean by uh, going for populated electronic cards at least for the when the quantity is less this is a good idea to go for populated cards and once it is uh, proven uh, the hardware is proven and uh, you can uh, tailor make for the particular application thereby you can make a cost effective system if it is uh, going to be in large numbers. If it is not going to be in large numbers you can rest content with the populated cards themselves. And uh, um, this is an important thing next point you have to use the right tools must be used to minimize the development cycle time. So, we have already seen that um, uh, simulation and uh, synthesis as well as the place and route tools having been used. If you go out I mean uh, there are all the uh, you should uh, uh, not just download um, uh, uh, institution tools and then be content. It will have lots of limitations and uh, you cannot uh, really uh, make any uh, worthwhile product that you want to sell in the market or if you want to uh, if you are aiming for R and D work also you have to have uh, the right tools and in the proper mix you have to use in the right measure and uh, that expedits the uh, development cycle time. So, let us consider uh, two such uh, um, uh, applications first application is the electrostatic respirator controller, second one is the JPEG this H261 you can correct it as 263 I think the latest one is that one and this is for video phone as well as for video conferencing and uh, MPEG codec and uh, JPEG and MPEG uh, based on DCT we have already seen as a DCT queue and uh, we need to add more uh, modules to that in order to make uh, the second application feasible. And uh, what we are going to cover is only detailed specification along with the block diagram, but it is up to you to study and uh, get um, uh, see different sites or the references I have given at towards the end of that. And uh, if you still uh, uh, want more information you can always contact me. So, let us go to the first application this is called the electrostatic respirator controller. Uh, it is used in fly ash disposal in uh, thermal power plant. So, you see that when you see go to a thermal plant uh, um, uh, you will be told that there will be uh, several tons of ash generated every hour and uh, this is going to be a very um, cumbersome affair to dispose of. For example, if you release it in the air the entire township will be covered by ash this I have uh, practically seen because I have myself handled one of these controllers of course, uh, what I designed uh, did not bring about that. Uh, covering, but I have seen such a thing uh, few units ma malfunctioning had covered the uh, entire township including um, uh, suburban train and which I used to travel. And uh, so, another problem is water stream cannot wash the ash away 
uh, it will get clogged in a short time no matter how uh, big the uh, opening is and uh, the remedy for this is as follows uh, is it is to apply a very high voltage DC voltage of the order of 80 kilo volt in the uh, EP is the electrostatic precipitator abbreviated and uh, if you do that uh, what will happen the um, uh, basic uh, um, electrode is uh, negatively charged and positive charges uh, uh, on the uh, entire chamber. So naturally the ash gets um, along with the flue gas is pumped in at a very high rate um, and naturally it brushes past all this positive because uh, the whole uh, chamber is uh, along with the uh, tubing that connects will be basically positively charged. So naturally ash gets this uh, charge and uh, once it uh, enter the chamber it will see um, the electrodes crisscrossing the entire uh, chamber. The chamber can be very uh, huge and uh, as big as a studio here and uh, it will be uh, full of electrode and uh, that is negatively charged and uh, any ash which has already got uh, positive charge would naturally get attracted to this uh, um, electrode and gets deposited all uh, over the uh, electrodes. So in order to get rid of this uh, ash what we uh, had to do is we had to activate special hammers and uh, so as to free, um, free the ash and uh, once you free um, um, it will uh, fall down into gravity and collect at the bottom and at the bottom there will be a stream of water going. Now uh, like a tame um, uh, bull or whatever you call it will be washed away uh, very conveniently. This is uh, uh, and um, each ash acquires the same negative charge so I think it is uh, one particle of ash uh, will be repulsed so it does not cling to uh, each other. And uh, these are all the uh, without this application of 80 kilo volts naturally the um, ash the slightest of excuse it gets airborne and that is how it fills the entire township if left uh, straight away. So the control uh, panel is uh, like this. So this is required because you have, uh, when you uh, design a system what is uh, apparent to the customer is the actual control panel and uh, what you see here is and uh, four digits display one digit for called DS1 this is to um, tell you different uh, which mode we are in and uh, this is basically it is not even hexadecimal we will explain how what uh, displays are there and uh, you have one N1 through N8 displays for uh, uh, various um, uh, parameters say for example uh, that is uh, in order to generate uh, 80 kilo volts you need a very high uh, um, high voltage transformer as well and normally you would see uh, that right on the thermal power plant right on the top you may see and uh, most of the thermal plants have that right on the top and that is abbreviated as TR meaning thereby um, transformer and if it is very high this LED must be on similarly if it is um, I am sorry if it is high it should be on if it is very high if otherwise a thigh resistor is there in order to generate um, uh, uh, DC supply from the AC supply and we use thigh resistors for that and for thigh resistors are also to be uh, fired from this controller what we are going to design and, uh, and uh, any thigh resistor overload that is overload in sense basically it uh, reflects as current there and uh, that also will have to be sensed and indicated here and uh, 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 you have a transformer therefore there will be some oil cooled so you need a top float or bottom float you have to know the oil position there. And, uh, this unit itself will uh, 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 work only up to a particular voltage. If the voltage goes below a particular thing, uh, it has to indicate the under voltage. Normally, it is minus 40 percent if, uh, if line voltage goes below, it will indicate here. And uh, this we have already seen. Then uh, here, as we mentioned that um, uh, we apply very high voltage in order to collect the ash. So uh, needless to say depending upon the uh, flue gas that uh, goes past these electrodes at a rapid rate along with the ash will uh, make the uh, current electrostatic respirator current uh, highly fluctuating. So the voltage also will uh, go up or down accordingly. So it always sees some valley and peak. So it goes up, up and down and so also the current. So when that uh, voltage peak has been arrived that also will have to be indicated that is what is here this uh, and uh, you can put this controller in either a local mode or remote mode that is indicated here and the switch for doing that one is shown here and two positions are there. And uh, as we see that I mean uh, since high voltage is involved 
and the current at a particular moment may be uh, quite high and uh, uh, sparking may take place. It may be as bad as a lightning uh, that you see up on the skies and uh, uh, naturally that will lead to deterioration of the electrodes and uh, eventual uh, breakdown or burnout. So, you had to count this uh, uh, sparking here we uh, the term is sparks and uh, accumulator sparks will have to be displayed in an electromagnetic counter. So, the, even if the power failure this will have to preserve what all it has accumulated till I mean uh, date. And uh, if you want to set the precipitator current you can use the pot meter here and uh, this is the pot meter which we are going to see in the block diagram. And we have P0, P1 through P10 all uh, a bone spot meter here you can the, there will be a label here and you can open that one and then set once set normally you do not change till you want to make some other setting. And there will be two BCD switches here uh, just underneath address that furnishes the uh, decimal identification number for the controller. You can identify right from set from 0 through 99 that means 100 such controllers can be uh, uh, networked and uh, there can be one com uh, uh, common computer system uh, from which you can uh, control uh, or change the parameters of any of these controllers. And uh, normal uh, this intake for uh, many of the thermal plants is quite high because uh, I remember that every 1 megawatt of power that you generate you need one unit for this. And even if one or two units fail normally they have a units of 12 or some such thing even if one fails in that one. Uh, ash will uh, get uh, airborne and uh, you have a keyboard also here it is not only a keyboard here that you see with this 4 uh, plus 2 keys this is to change the mode uh, up arrow, uh, arrow as well as down arrow and uh, 3 other LEDs are there in order to measure the current etc uh, voltage etc. And then you have a timer which you can switch on so that you can uh, when you apply uh, HD this HD is the uh, 80 volts or whatever we want to apply. You can, this is a toggle mode if you up, uh, press once it will be switched on and uh, how uh, rapidly it should climb up to the high voltage will have to be determined and uh, you can uh, determine that by uh, switching on a timer if you want fast you just repeatedly uh, press this one it will uh, speed up expedite the uh, uh, slope and so on. And uh, you can f go for what is called peak mode so it is basically to uh, measure the peak etc. So, this uh, these are all the controls that you need to understand in order to design. Now, we will go into the uh, some of the function modes. For example, my, uh, you can display uh, minus there uh, if you do it will indicate the perspirator current on the 3 dis, uh, digits that you have seen earlier. So, here uh, will be displayed the uh, perspirator current you use this display and uh, use one of these keys in order to go from one uh, mode to other. So, minus mode takes the perspirator current it displays the actual perspirator current it is actually rated up to 1 amp maximum and uh, 80 uh, kilo volt is the DC voltage which is next E stands for the perspirator voltage. And uh, how many sparks have occurred per minute that is also very important because uh, safety is very important that uh, can be got in H mode. And then uh, how much maximum current that you can set uh, is determined by 0 mode so I maximum limit. And uh, what is the normal uh, standard current that you want to set normally you set for 75 these are all the set points for that this is the maximum is 100 and uh, the range is 0 to 104. This uh, 104 corresponds to so you know we are going to use an 8 bit ADC and uh, it is um, uh, unsigned. So, the uh, 256 would correspond to 5 volts 0 to 5 volts is 0 to um, uh, all F's 8 bits. So, this 104 corresponds to that all F's. So, that is what you had uh, know and so is the case for all other parameters. There are so many other uh, parameters that you need to set initially all this will happen will have to be non volatile therefore, it has uh, uh, pot meter has been used which you have already seen in the previous setting P 1 through P 11 there uh, P 10 there. And uh, there are other uh, parameters called uh, slope control then timer control and so on and uh, you do not have to know about uh, details of this what all you have to know is 5 volts should correspond to 20 uh, I mean uh, not 5 volt actually all F's 5 volt would correspond to 256 in decimal 255 is the one which corresponds to this or 100 or 104 in uh, ADC output and so is the case here T control and slope after uh, park uh, spark and uh, what is to be set is here and the range that you need to cater to is here 
So, 0 would correspond to 0 of uh, ADC output binary 8 bit and uh, FF uh, in hexadecimal of course or 255 in decimal would correspond to 99 for this case elsewhere 109 and so on. So, is the case uh, for uh, this uh, 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 under voltage UV is not ultraviolet it is under voltage we have already seen. So, that also you can set here uh, normally a 10 is set here and uh, up to 40 also is uh, can be set. So, then uh, other parameters are the ch uh, charge ratio, pulse current, loop gain and this is normally for uh, one of the I think uh, precipitator current or the voltage uh, uh, what is the gain to be set in the uh, because there are analog channels as well. And uh, this is the address that I have mentioned already this is the unit address that uh, uh, this uh, precipitator controller uh, uh, address and uh, base charge set charging current and peak value voltage these are all the uh, uh, charging current how fast it is charging and uh, what is the base charging current uh, these are all the parameters that you need and uh, and all have the same notation. So, 5 volts would correspond to 26 in uh, uh, decimal for 8 bit uh, ADC output and you need to uh, find the peak as well as the value voltage. So, it will alternately give the same display th 3 digit display that you have well in blank mode it will give the peak as well as the voltage. And uh, note that settings are there only for this not for this because these are all basic uh, uh, actual field measurement So, for example, all this and so on. And that is what is given as set and range here and this uh, actually uh, the rear end of the um, uh, unit will have all this uh, I O connections and uh, I do not have to go into the details because we have already covered different LEDs etcetera for example, alarm warning all this are there in that and uh, uh, this is thyristor uh, overload etcetera temperature high and precipitator current all these are actual um, uh, places where you want to connect this is basically I O connection. So, do not take uh, very much seriously about that. And uh, here comes the um, I O card there are basically uh, two cards one is the I O uh, three cards rather I O card as well as uh, where the signal conditioning will have to be done and uh, it has electrostatic precipitator current this is the analog uh, uh, um, op amp you have to use you have to use in a differential mode uh, two stage amplifier you can have. So, uh, and this uh, first stage is for CMRR adjustment. So, unity gain for that matter and so is the case here except that uh, this will be sensing uh, the actual current you have a resistor here and then let the current flow here this uh, I am sorry uh, voltage flow here for current you need to measure the voltage and uh, and, uh, and for uh, voltage you need to measure the current. So, there, there would not be any resistor I mean there will be a resistor here for this whereas there is no resistor here. So, that is all the requirement here and this goes as the I naught channel and uh, this goes as I 1 channel as well as I 14 channel there is intermediate uh, uh, voltage also is required here and uh, uh, we need a sample and hold circuit and uh, for that there is a control required and this is 15 channel I naught through I 15 are different uh, analog channels here and you have uh, you have to check supply as well and you need a watchdog timer here and a trigger will have to be created and you need to know which is a positive cycle or negative cycle that is what is here and you need to connect the transformer here uh, in order to know which cycle you are in. And uh, here are all the 7 circuits for auto isolated uh, inputs it is basically potentially free contact for uh, various uh, uh, parameters that we need to uh, uh, measure which we have already seen earlier as uh, temperature high and so on some such, uh, 7 are there. And uh, it IO card also has some 4 release at the output and there are drivers. Uh, these ports are the ones which will have to connect it to the FPGA board and uh, power supply is what is shown here this will go to field connection and uh, uh, these are all the uh, opto isolated output here there are two such numbers here to inert and there is a firing card here which will um, uh, house a, a pulse transformer in order to give to the uh, a gate of the thyristor there are two outputs such which will control um, uh, a full wave uh, thyristor and uh, for uh, both positive cycle as well as negative cycle. And uh, this is the FPGA uh, that we will have to design and AC positive negative we have seen we had to have uh, reset from watchdog timer and sample and hold we had to create from the FPGA trigger also we had to create and uh, for ADC you need a start pulse then um, output enable pulse then uh, AL also is required. So, that um, 
you can give the address also from here which channel you are referring to. At one time you can uh, uh, do only I mean uh, measure only one uh, channel input as such. This we have already seen uh, and um, I2 through I11 and I13 are for part meters. So, there is a clock output here and which is also pumped in from the FPGA here and uh, you have 4 uh, LEDs which we have already seen right on the panel and uh, you also need to have um, serial transmission. So, RX, TXD are required and you need a spark sensor this I naught channel is applied uh, electrostatic pressure control and it goes to one of the ports here and there are so many other ports uh, such as listed here and uh, so many LEDs are also required for displaying different things. This are all basically output and uh, two VCD switches we have already seen that also is required and one, uh, one bit output you required in order to apply pulse whenever a spark takes place and this is the electromagnetic counter that is also an LED to indicate when it is active and uh, a keyboard is also there this uh, you can connect to this in a matrix fashion or uh, independently as a port and then sense which key has been pressed. This keyboard is what we have already seen in the front panel. This is what is the FPGA card and that is for the first application. Second application you are already familiar with JPEG and MPEG as well as uh, uh, video phone which is what is shown here image input is applied DC to Q we have already seen in depth. What you have to design is the variable length coder as well as its inverse. This is at the encoder end uh, bit stream is output here and which is received here at the decoder and then inverse operation will have to be done and IQ IDST also we have already seen how to do. Out comes the reconstructor image. This is the hardware reconstructor image which we have already shown to you as DCTQ previously. So, around 30 dB you have got. It is a fairly good image that you have got. And uh, so, what all you have to do is you need to design the variable length decoder before you output the DCTQ output and um, onto the stream. And you also need to have a controller at the encoder end. Next is the decoder, it is just the inverse operation uh, in order to get the reconstructor image. And uh, the DCTQ is actually created in uh, RAS scan order 1, 2, 3, 8, then 9 and so on and so on. This is per block, per block is 8 by 8 pixels and in VLC you had to code in this fashion 1, 2, then uh, 9, then uh, go on to 17, then 10 and so on. It is a diagonally it goes, it is called a zigzag order and right up to 64 and this is for the vari uh, variable length code processing. The uh, block diagram for the variable length coder is here, this is the main unit wherein uh, DCTQ is fed and each of the questions is translated into a variable uh, bit. So, it, uh, the lowest end it will be 2 bits, at highest end 28 bits. So, uh, finally, all said and done you get um, uh, uh, a compressed bit stream here and you need a FIFO uh, so that you uh, accumulate first all the bits and uh, then finally, uh, transmit in a, a controlled manner. If you want you can add one more called a red control and uh, there is a mux here so that you can get either the uh, uh, normal VLC or the header information. Header information is what you give say through the host bus as to what the picture size that you are going to uh, send and uh, what is the bit rate. So, all that uh, information can be uh, sent here and that can be sent through the host and uh, reference for this uh, application is given at the end and there will uh, there are papers as well to that effect uh, from the um, speaker and uh, there is also a controller which uh, uh, handles um, all these activities and uh, when to send the header is uh, indicated by this host will have to give this here and uh, when this is uh, whole uh, VLC is ready will have to be given by the uh, you the designer uh, to say that uh, uh, header ready uh, signal is asserted and host bus is what is connected here. So, next is the uh, we have a central controller for the VLC with uh, send a header, header ready clock and from host you need to give the address uh, as to where you want to send the header. Header is up to 20, 128 bits, so several bytes will, uh, is required, in fact 30 bytes are required and that is the address, you need address for byte count. So, that is what you give here and a number of bits you have to send out through the bit stream also will have to be given by the host and uh, this is load is from the controller which is to load um, uh, the uh, header uh, register. These are all internal thing we should uh, you should get from the RAM which is stored which was written by the um, host in the header RAM get one byte and load it here and basically this left shift register you output that particular uh, bit after bit uh, as a stream here that is how you can I mean, get the uh, this is called header serial output converter. 
and next is the basic VLC generator. This also has a controller with so many DC to Q quantization which you get from the previous stage and whether it is a DC quotient or AC quotient is being said from here and a color component which component you are processing is uh, input here then a right signal is there of course there is a clock and you have basically uh, DC to Q applied here and uh, you have a subtractor here which will take the previous uh, block uh, DC, to, uh, DC value and then uh, that which is registered here in this registers depending for 3 color components 3 registers are there and uh, depending upon uh, luminance or CBCR which can be input here through, uh, uh, from the host and uh, which will identify which color component you are uh, processing and uh, for each of the color component uh, you have to process separately. So, very first question that you give is a DC question and that is uh, you have to um, take the previous value of the DC uh, previous block and the present block and uh, subtract the two present is applied here previous is applied here take uh, the difference and then apply the DC uh, VLC quarter which is nothing but a VLC table that is furnished in the uh, uh, reference that will be given here and whether it is uh, if it is AC quarter that also is governed by the same table and uh, once again you input here and uh, for this you have to find out from the table which code we have to pump in here depending upon DC or AC there is a MUX and there is a control there which will finally output at the bit stream here and the reference I hope it is clear are you clear and you will get more clarity if you refer to the reference here and uh, these are all the standards uh, references right for JPEG H261 and uh, for uh, MPEG1 then MPEG2 and this is a very good book on uh, by K R Rao for techniques and standards for image processing and uh, next is the uh, from the uh, speaker there are three papers one to the effect of DCTQ the and uh, another is for the VLC here. These are all uh, IEEE uh, conference at uh, Florida and uh, Geneva and you can refer to these references and um, uh, there is also a journal paper uh, in Elsevier uh, to the tune of uh, I mean uh, for MPEG 2 video encoder and uh, if you apply these three uh, I mean uh, you can uh, uh, um, put together with these standards you can uh, easily uh, code for the VLC as well as for VLD. In the last 50 or so lectures my colleague Dr. Ramachandran and me and I have given you a overview, a overview and a detailed design knowledge of digital VLSI system design. As introduced to you in the introductory lecture in the first lecture, we went through the digital system design and advanced systems design and uh, more important than the systems being advanced systematic design procedures and how to use various tools available to convert the design into hardware description language and from there to simulate it and synthesize it and place and route on FPGAs. Many examples were shown in the during the course of these lectures, many demonstrations were made, codes were given and you have been given a very long list of ideas on which you can work further to make your own designs and you can very freely use any of the codes that was developed in the class because they have been all tested and demonstrated they all working codes. So, any of those codes you want you can always use in your design for your system and make your design simple uh, your design effort simpler to that extent. Secondly, you do not have to limit yourself to the ideas given. These are only various ideas we had about what you can do yourself. There are many more things you can think of. The innovation, your creativity is the limit. You can go and do all those designs, come up with newer and newer designs. But the, the basic point is whatever we have taught you are basics and it comes you comes with you along with this you can improve your knowledge as I said it is technology independent does not matter what technology it is the designs are portable you can also try it on other FPGAs even though we have used Xilinx FPGAs as an example in this course. So, all these things you can do yourself 
and that way you can enjoy the whole thing and I hope you will be able to you were able to understand follow most of these lectures and whichever lectures you have not followed go on repeatedly seeing them again and again if you repeatedly see them you will get to know the idea and sometimes when you do not see a understand something that is because you missed an earlier lecture or missed a concept in one of the earlier lectures. The idea is to go back to those lectures and see it again and again then you will get good idea. But more importantly it is not enough to just see lectures you have to try it yourself. Take simple examples start writing codes compile them simulate them to start with you do not even have to synthesize and place and out. Depends on the facilities available in your college or the workplace. But once you are confident with the simulation, then you go looking for hardware and then start your synthesis process, plus and place and route. And try new ideas, you can submit project proposals, either for competitions or for your own projects in the class, or in industry. If you are working in industry, you can use these ideas and then come up with solutions for the existing products that are designing or new products manager will appreciate all that. So, I we would like we will be very happy both of us would be extremely happy if you feel that this lectures have been useful to you in your quest of knowledge in the, in the domain of digital VLSS system design. As I said digital earlier in one of my introductory lectures it is only an inter, digital is only one aspect of VLSA design, VLSA design has analog design analog is less than 10 percent of the total uh, design, but it is effort wise it is non trivial. You can try mixed signal design where both analog and digital will re reside together in one single IC single design and then there are uh, issues like CAD computer aided design tools, fabrication issues, low power estimation, low power designs and so many other things sir. Once you are interested in VLSA there is so many areas you can pursue. So, we would expect you to use these things properly and we will be happy if you had derived the benefit that we had in mind for these lectures for you and I hope you enjoyed listening to these lectures as much as we enjoyed teaching you this material. Thank you very much for patiently going through all these lectures. Goodbye.